Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. And I'm the captain. <laughs> Welcome to our demonstration, for me again, of the Boss GT1000. GT1000, it's like a GT100 with an extra O. Zero. Or times Augmented 10, impulse response dynamic. On, sorry, aired. Augmented. Deoxyribose nucleic acid. Yes. Is what makes us, and that DNA is in all of us, and including this thing here. Wow, well, for both of you that are still listening, um, <laughs> here is our demo of a product that we first saw at the NAM show uh, in 2018, January 2018, and I think it's fair to say we were whelmed. Whelmed. I didn't see it at NAM. Oh, you didn't? No, I was too busy of, working. It looked cool, and we liked the Bluetooth app connectivity thing, but the sound was meh. You didn't launch the plectrum too far. <laughs> only, only about four inches in the air was the maximum um, plectrum launchage. And we gave the very nice man, who I think his name was Jeff, we gave him a bit of a hard time. I love about Jeff. The fact that he's a nice guy. About the fact that we sort of were going, well, really? Why would you buy this over a Helix LT? Anyway, six months later, or pretty much six months later, and I'm reliably informed that the people at Boss took on board all of that early criticism, and they really did kind of go, come on, we've got to just up the game here. Um, and so by the time this has been released, which is pretty much now, um, it is more authentic sounding. And in the little messing around that Rob and I have been doing for the last 10 minutes or so, we are going, mm, mm. this is potentially um, a, a very viable alternative to Helix LT, because um, it is that kind of money. Well, I spent a day with Jeff Slingworth, who's a great guy at Boss yes. headquarters, playing with the GT1000, and we got some preposterous tones. Preposterous. Preposterous. Time. Preposterous. Time. Um, Peter Preposterthwaite, weight one of the finest actors um, this country. Pothelthwaite. weight yes. What was your favourite film that Pete Pothelthwaite weight was in? I don't know who he is. He's a very famous actor. He was in um, The Usual Suspects, wasn't he? Oh, right. Wasn't he in The Usual Suspects? I'm pretty sure. And he was in... Uh, oh, you'd recognise his face if you saw him. I'm sure I Very would. Cool. I'm pretty sure he's in Sexy Beast as well, which right. is one of the best films He's not the ever. best actor of all time, I suppose, though. Uh, who's the best actor? The of best... All? You're not going to say Mark Hamill, are you? Actor of so all... I'll have to hit you with a guitar. Time and Space has an interesting delivery. He talks a bit like that, you know. Are, are we... Is, I don't, I'm sorry, are we going De Niro or No, no, I'm uh, just not going to tell you, and I'm going to let the entire of YouTube Say see it again, if... again, then? He, he, he's got like a... Stutter, like a he, deliv he, delivers his, pauses. he delivers things in a really interesting way. He was in a really... Uh, yeah, both of them. Amazing... <laughs> he was in a really amazing <laughs> film where he ends up shooting himself at the Vietnam War, which is really sad. And, oh. uh, and he's... Uh, that is Robert De Niro. Th that's definitely who it was, the Robert So that's who you were trying... Yeah. That's who you were doing your impression of, was it? Uh, absolutely. I don't, I'm sorry. Anyway, right, come on. So, GT1000. Now, uh, rather than, I think, some of these videos that we've done in the past where we've gone deep, and I'm talking deep, like... Deep undercover. of the ocean deep. Uh, it gets a bit boring, and we tell you billions of features that you're really just going, can I just hear what it sounds like? So, hey, here we go. Um, I'm using the uh, app that it comes with, which I will criticise later because I'm not a huge fan of the app, although it's functional. Uh, I think it could do more. Uh, and we're screen recording the app as well. So periodically, I'm sure uh, Rory will show you uh, the screen that I've got in my hand. So this first um, sound is called Premium Drive. We'll go through a few and then I'll show you kind of some of the ways that these patches are put together. So Maybe with an A note? Do it. You are hearing this, by the way, straight out of the uh, outputs of the GT1000. No guitar amps. Oh, they uh, don't have the luxury position in the we're in this then. video. No, we've got sound coming from the two atomic uh, CLR powered wedges either side of us. So we're getting stereo mega noise. It's awesome. The first time I've ever seen you look like an air hostess. Would you like another gin and tonic, sir? I certainly would. I yes, do love travelling first class. <laughs> uh, right, this one's called Deep Shimmer Rev. Ready? Yes. It's <laughs> that, isn't it? Tap on that if you want it. 
uh, the power of MDP. I dread to think what that is. <laughs> MDP, multi-dimensional processing, you dirty-minded lot. Uh, modern LD, clur. <laughs> I don't know, lead to clean, I guess. Does this do something? <laughs> Try it. That's still volume. <laughs> Oh, I like that one. They're boring. Multiband crunch. Multiband crunch? Yep. I quite like that. Am I ever? Look. Needs a bit brighter that one, I think. But anyway, jazz chorus, 3D jazz chorus. There's a tone. That's beautiful, huh? It is. I don't want the chord to end. Don't let and it. And also, end. I want to know what happens if you fade it in. Fade it out. Just put a beat behind that. Uh, wrecked 57 slur penut to W. So it's uh, SLO. I would say rectifier with a 57 on. Country twang. Something, haven't Flash you? Gordon, innit? Go it's on. Flash Gordon. Try it, do it again. It's Flash Gordon, mate. That's a chord. All day long. What does it do with the harmonic? That's what I want to know. Let's find out. One note. Look at 
that. Careful, there'll be a bloody spaceship in the car park in about five minutes. A bloody spaceship. Yeah. Um, right. Anyway, enough, enough, enough. <laughs> this is the best invention ever. The, the, the Rob cut operator. <laughs> uh, rotator. Oh, God. Rotate me. That's cool, I like that. Do you? I like this. Oh, I didn't realize this does something different. Oh, I see. So this is, with this all the way back, it's just an acoustic simulation. And then if I put this in, it'll blend the regular electric guitar in with it as well. Burning purple. Oh dear. Oh. <laughs> Burning purple. Here we go. Burning Purple is a it's Smoke a, on the Water reference. I think it, well, I was going to say it could I be. I think it's a Smoke on the Water reference rather than a Jimmy Hendrix you? reference. Should we play it really badly? I hate it when people do that. But. It's clever. Uh, fat Gainer. That's me, isn't it? Isn't <laughs> possibly. That my, it's not my nickname. Quite possibly, yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, it does add a bit of gain to it. Th these are effects pedals that would be associated with the that, patch. I know that, but how did you know that that was going to do anything? Because I, I did a demo of this No, I don't before. believe you. I don't think this has done anything. It does. All right, then. Ready? Mild organ space? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I regularly wish my mild organ had more space. Well, there's millions, as you can see. As, randomly uh, you know, choose them. Uh, well, I don't want to randomly choose them. I'm going to choose ones with good names. Okay, so, that's how I choose uh, them. I'm going with double amp. Boom. I've seen a better one. Shred lead. Boosted X. <laughs> um, anyway, look, as I said, you could literally go on forever. So I guess what is it that kind of whether you like the sound of this or not relative to some of the videos that you've heard of Helix is obviously going to be subjective. Um, and you know, pretty much the concept of the pedal is the same. I think from looking at it, I'd probably argue that the Helix is a little, a little bit more intuitive to use. Um, but in terms of some of the, the, the big sounds that are in here, there's, there's not a lot to really sort of split them. Um, but what Helix can't do is the, the Bluetooth thing. So I'm going to just quickly show you the kind of view that you get. Now, whilst I massively like the idea of there being an iPad controller for this, 
I was expecting it to be way more intuitive and look like some of those software plugins that you get where you see physical amplifiers and pedals and you change them. And it doesn't really, it kind of just looks like a, a version of the screen that's on here. But anywho, so this is the, the premium drive. That was the first one that we did. And you can kind of see, uh, as I scroll along here, a great big long line of effects that I could chain up if I wanted to. Um, gives you a rough idea of the power of this machine and that there's absolutely dozens of effects that I could put in if I wanted to. Um, if I want to go to one, uh, I well, sorry, if I just want to turn stuff on and off, I can just literally press, you can see me now on the screen, I'm pressing the amp one button and you see it turns on and off. If I hold the amp one button down, he says, it, it uh, jumps into the actual uh, effect that that is shows me here that there are three pages of this so the first thing I can see is that the amp is called X high gain I can change it to different kinds of um, different kinds of uh, guitar amp if I want to and then I've got this three pages of, of uh, settings um, all relatively simple I'm just basically dragging my finger over and the, the middle button here so you can see it going up and down um, so that's kind of simple uh, but again, reminds me of the sort of app that you get on something like Marshall Code or something, you know, like just, yeah. it's pretty basic. I was, it doesn't visually uh, ex I sort think of the external, me. the external does not belie the neath, but under, inside, it's better than the outside. Don't judge a book. So, um, technologically, it is super, super high-end, 32-bit ADA, 32-bit floating. I understand it's the most powerful uh, processor on the market. It's crazy, crazy powerful processing. Uh, I mean, they, it's, it's very, very odd. I find this quite difficult to get my head around. But when you have a product like Katana, where they nailed so well and it sounds so good, for so little money. And then they say that GT1000 is all the kind of the gubbins that went into Katana. So you're going like, ooh. And then they're just, it just still seems to have that slight tinge of, it's not quite as realistic as you thought it might. I mean, it might well be that that's just symptomatic of the fact that we're running out the DI and we're not going through proper guitar cabinets and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I don't know that, I mean, for me with these things, it's always the, the, the clean sounds are what blow you Shine. away. They're just stunning. And then the distortion sounds feel like you're tweaking and tweaking and tweaking until you just about go, yeah, that's okay. You know, that, that'll get me through. Um, rather than like, oh, that's the best distortion guitar sound I've ever heard. I don't think you, you get this to, oh, everyone gets a thing for a different reason, don't they? I'm going to be slightly Switzerland here and say that I don't think you'd buy a GT1000 if you wanted like a perfect British crunch tone. You'd buy a British valve amp. I think you get this yeah. for masses of flexibility as a writing tool, as a get out and gig and a function band tool. As it's, it's many, many, many things. That's why it's good. You don't get it to be one particular thing. I mean, it's got some effects returns in here. So if you've got like a favorite drive pedal or whatever and you want to link that through it, so, you know, that'll... Well, that'll forget, perhaps... Yeah, you could also just plug that into a valve amp and use the effects. I don't know that I've met many Helix users that are... Helix HX, which is just the effects bit of it is being used with amps but I think most of the Helix and Helix LT users and I suspect the same with these you know pe people that buy this will be buying it to replace the guitar amp whether sure. that's in a recording yeah, yeah. thing or a live thing so I don't know that it, the angle is really I guess you can use the four cable method can't you yeah. four candles the old Ronnie Corbett sketch um, I mean value for money wise you could argue that you know if you looked at the 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 MD500 and the DD500, which are, what, the thick end of £300 each or something like that. Um, they're both in here, as well as a bucket load of other stuff. So oh, it's sorry. like, it's like you know... And the RV500. You've got sorry. Diablo 2, the expansion, and then you've got Diablo 3, but do you prefer Diablo 3 or Path of Exile? Because arguably Path of Exile offers more for the traditional player, but then Diablo 3 is like all flashy, special, they've got the new Shaman, they've got the Necromancer, mm -hmm. but then Path of Exile... I mean, it's huge. So it's like, do you go for the shiny new version of the original or the original? And the answer is the GT1000 is really good. Wow. Uh, I sort of zoned out a bit there, Rob. But um, I mean, there, there are, uh, they, they do make a big deal in, in the press about the fact that the, uh, you know, you could absolutely load in your own uh, customized impulse responses into this if you want. And, and we know that makes a big difference if, you know, for getting uh, good, uh, driven guitar sounds recorded so I'm you know I'm sort of in I suppose in all realness 
I like elements of this. Yes. There are elements that I think need developing. Here's my take. Here's my hot take. Chappas hot take. It doesn't matter how incredible your processing is if what you're processing is a sound that isn't accurate. And there are other things on the market that have incredibly accurate uh, representations. They, does it rhyme with distemper? No. But November. what I was going to say is, if you want an accurate valve amp, yeah. then you use a valve amp. If you don't care about things being accurate and live, and you're playing to like 500 people in a venue through a PA, I'm telling you now, you could put that through it and it'll sound great. It oh, won't I sound like a valve amp, because it isn't a valve amp. Yeah. But it will sound great, and the audience won't know or care. I, I'm, I've got to utterly agree with you there that you know that the, the the guys I know that are using helix and loving it yeah are all basically backing a singer and people go to the gig to see the singer and they play their guitar parts and at the end of the gig people go that's great guitar sound man what'd you like, use what, yeah what, what yeah, have yeah, you got yeah. it's just like so I don't I, I totally agree with you I think the expectations for this th this environment of like sitting in a room and going right let's see how accurate it is that's the harshest possible test for a product like this if we had just had a band going and we just started playing some chops in the background with the band man no one would know no, no one would know it's less about is it accurate and more about do you like it um, but I suppose I was kind of beginning to show you you know if we go back to the the, the iPads shot at the moment. If I just scroll really slowly across, you can kind of see some crazy, crazy Beautiful stuff like action. the number of delay. You know, you have four delays and a master delay, and two well, more effects pedals and some reverb. I mean, it's just like, are you kidding me? There's like eight billion things in it we, and a looper. Built we did. In. We did start this review by saying that we do less talking and more play. That's very true. Should we just do a bit more play? Yeah. And should you do it? Yeah, absolutely. So look, because Lee picked out a Jackson that he really liked. See, these are the sounds I like. I'm going to change to a strap. Oh, what the? That's mental, isn't it? Hey yeah, dudes, we, we had fun playing with a bunch of different kinds of sounds. Lee found a few he liked, I found a few I liked, and uh, we just ended up zoning out playing all sorts of weird keyboard patches and things. We came up with an interesting sort of, not conclusion really, but there's a lot of patches on here that have been designed just because they're possible. Rather, yeah. <laughs> rather than because they're any good. Yes. Uh, but then again, I guess that's just, you know, there'll be lots of guitar players out there that'll hear a weird sound and go, well, that's 
that I'm inspired by that to do something. And I guess if that's the case, then that's cool. But yes, for us, I think it is uh, it is another solid product from Boss. Not necessarily something that I will be rushing out to purchase myself. But then that's probably because it's not my kind of. In fairness, well, I you're a traditionalist. A, you're a valve a amp or a strat guy. Or anything, do I? Yeah, you're not so, you're not a forward thinking, futuristic kind of mm. million things on the floor kind of guy. I ah. think this will just confuse. People will just go, well, I, you know, I thought I was going to buy a Helix, but now I'm not so sure. Rather than, you know, I'll need to do a bit of research to decide rather than this being like a standout, oh, definitely going to get this over Helix. That's my, that's my honest opinion. I've definitely been Roger. <laughs> and I've been the captain. Bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Andertons Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.